The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Tuesday, September 4th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on. On Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Health is Happiness, the Evangelism Scripts Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And yes, it is hump day. It is the middle of the week. It is the day that we can say we've made it halfway through and only half left. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed your first half of the week thus far. We're heading to the second half soon. Uh, I hope you guys will also enjoy your Wednesday message word study. Oh, not Wednesday message word study. The Wednesday message service tonight. Uh, and don't forget, tomorrow is Q&A Thursday. So uh, get those questions ready. Send them to me whenever you can. And if you haven't yet, leave a like and comment to build our community. I am just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. All right. So the Sunday message title is God Works Appearing Through the Temple That Symbolizes God. Ah, it is the middle of the week. Hopefully everyone is enjoying their time. For me, it's the fifth week of my mission. And I think eventually, uh, I, I hope, I really, I'm looking forward to the day when I don't remember what week it is, right? Counting them down or whatever it is, right? Uh, I'm just waiting for the day when everything is normalized. I can just be me, do the things that I need to do. Um, like uh, the one thing really cool about this week is I'm with the Australian team. And... Uh, I'm going to tell you guys straight up right now, it is so nice to be with English-speaking members. It's so nice to have full-out conversations without trying to explain what I'm, you know, my jokes, my sarcasm, you know, just just the different thing. It's it's really, really different, just being with um, the people that speak the same language. And I am so grateful and thankful that I can be here with them. And uh, yeah. Technically, even though I've been here only for what f- my fifth week right now, this is my first time being with a, like a Western team and kind of learning on the go how to greet them, how to you know be with them and stuff like that too. Um, oh man, some amazing things have happened with this Australian team. Really, like really incredible. And if you guys don't know, it's hot during August, like super hot. It's blazing, like. Uh, humid, hot, sweaty. And um, what happened was, I think it was two days ago, uh, we went up to, you know, God's Path on Prayer Hill. And, you know, of course, no one can go on and stuff, but some people open just bits and pieces of it so people can walk on, on, on it. And it was really amazing. Uh, you know how God works through the weather? This was probably one of the most incredible things. Like, it was so it was so blaringly obvious that God was doing it. Uh, so we're at the top of God's path. And 9 a.m., Pastor Shinpeet is the one that's going, that's, you know, delivering it. Uh, sun was out, super blazing. It's 9 a.m. I'm just like, whoa. And like, we're, we're under the tree. But, you know, the tree branches, um, they're not really blocking the sun. So we have it, like, the sun is blazing on your face right? All the umbrellas are out. The, 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 the sun is kind of stinging your skin, whatever. And um, right when the education begins, like uh, Pastor Shinbi doesn't talk very loud. So, you know, I, I was like, oh, I'm in the shade, but I got to move forward or, or else I can't hear. So I started moving closer and closer and closer. And uh, it was like right then, thick clouds uh, begin to roll in and they just provide this cover. The sun wasn't, you know when you have the clouds there, but you still have like, it's not really like thick clouds so it doesn't block it. No, we're talking thick clouds that completely blocked out the sun. Like a huge group of clouds. It became visibly dimmer and it became refreshingly cooler, like that much. And it was for the entire duration of the education. It was nice and cool. Um, during the time, like people just naturally took their umbrellas down. It was comfortable listening to the education. I thought it was quite incredible. And I was just like, whoa. And right when it ends, 
um, the clouds begin to kind of open up again, and the sun begins to peek out of the clouds. And then it became hot again. It, it was incredible. And it was just kind of a sign that God was really, really with us. And uh, uh, yeah, it, and this wasn't just the first one, because later on in the day, in the afternoon, there was another tour we had of Wollongong for about two hours. And, you know, the sun goes down around 7 p.m. in Korea. We, we did the tour at like 4, and right at 4 o'clock, it was dim. The clouds were covering. It was nice and cool, right? And it like I just sat there like I can't believe how like amazing this weather is. And on top of it, on top of it, um, it's after all the retreats are done. So the feeling is, it's like wow. It's like we have a we. You know what? When you hear about celebrities, they buy out Disneyland so that they can go on all the rides with their kids and stuff. That's what it felt like in Wollongong. It felt like we bought out Wollongong. We bought it out completely. And now we're just, you know, we're, do, we're having a private tour walking around. And it's like God's providing shade. And when you really think about this, I was thinking about this too. I was like, wow, what's, this, is, like, this is so incredible. But there was, there was something that a realization I had the day before. Right, the realization I had the day before is the day before there was um, we had education for something's doctor, and after all the education was done, me and the doctor were just like chilling, we're talking with each other and stuff, and he was just telling me, "Well, it's like wow, it was incredibly deep for a foreign country. Like it's not that easy to go that deep with a foreign country." So we're just talking and talking, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." I was like, "Has this ever happened before?" And this guy says something that both of us realize at the same time. He says, the only other team that had something this deep was, was uh, I believe, Hong Kong. And right at that moment, both him and I were like, whoa, that's so crazy. Like, you know, with Sun Steam's trial right now, it's where the two people came from who are accusing Sun Steam. And these are the two countries that probably have experienced the most difficulty. And it was just, it was incredible just both of us looking at each other like, whoa. It was Hong Kong and Australia, the two countries that received the most like difficulty. And you just see like God is blessing them. They're, they are just completely blessing them so much because they have gone through a lot more than other countries too. And I thought it was quite incredible. And I was just like really thankful to God that I could experience and just see it like in real life how it happens, right? So, you know, it's very interesting. Um, there's something else that I want to talk about is about myself. Obviously, I talk about myself all the time. But uh, as I'm doing this job as director, I really begin to notice things about myself. Like, I really do. I really notice things about myself more. Because, you know, when you're, you're new and fresh into something, you're learning as you go, right? And there's a lot of things that I don't know as I'm learning along the way. But eventually, as I get more and more comfortable, I settle in. But I also feel uh, it's interesting because as I settle in, as I'm beginning to learn more, what I notice is I feel that some of my old faults are rising up. Like, you know, you know like the, the things that are in my, uh, you know, like the Keynes personalities and stuff. And it's really interesting because, uh, I, and I think this is a very good thing for me, uh, for understanding myself better, improving myself, to be able to look at myself honestly, be accountable for my words and actions. But uh, it's weird because I see it in real time. I see it in real, like as I'm thinking it and as the emotions come up, I already, like, oh my goodness, why am I doing this? Do you know what I mean? Like, usually you, you realize it later on, you know, after the fact and you feel bad and guilty. I am realizing it as it's happening. And I'm talking to myself in my brain. And I find it really interesting and weird at the same time. Because, you know, in the past, when I talked to you guys over this podcast, you know, it's during the pandemic. It's not a lot of time. It's, I'm not really meeting with a lot of people. I'm not working together and such. And, you know, uh, during that time, uh, if you guys go into my earlier podcast, I have so much, I have times of reflection. Reflections of who I am, what I did well, the things I did wrong uh, in the past, uh, my character, the, the things that are wrong with my character, things I don't like. You know, I'd have all this time to reflect during the time of the pandemic, right? 
And it's kind of like a self-assessment or like I'm taking inventory of who I am. And, but the interesting thing is like reflection or observation of myself or looking back, taking inventory, that is just in my head, right? And it's it's just me recognizing what is wrong, recognizing the things that are like I don't like about myself, right? But now that I'm getting back into a mission and working together with people, I see the the part that's harder is I'm I really have to fix it. Like I I'm because you know when you're not with people and you're you're alone, I'm doing a podcast by myself. I can have tons of time to reflect, tons of time to see. Oh, this was wrong. That was wrong. This is wrong, right? But now, as I'm working more closely with people, I have to deal with it. And the good thing is, uh, the one thing I found that, that was very helpful and one of the biggest reasons I think that I'm able to catch it on the fly is that because I, I had the time to reflect. I had the time to look at myself. So I, I, can, I acknowledge and I know the things that are wrong with me. So now, as I'm working together with people again, in the midst of meetings and such, and the stresses that come up, like these things start to kind of come out of my heart. And now the cool thing is, I actually get to deal with these, la- like these lackings of mine. It's really, really interesting to now be able to really deal with it and fix it because I'm recognizing it more quickly. And I think the best part is, and I think that's one of the good things that I did during the time of the pandemic is the reflection and self-assessment, the taking of inventory, right? The taking, the, the, it, it allows me to, to really see things that I shouldn't be seeing. You know what I mean? So once I acknowledge it, once I recognize it, once I know that, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me, then what happens next? Then the next thing obviously is like, okay, so now I know that these are my faults. I acknowledge them. I, I, I confess them with my lips. But now that I confess them, I can recognize them much more quickly. Like in real time, while it's happening, I'm like, ooh, I shouldn't feel this way. Ooh, why, why am I thinking this? Oh, why am I rushing this? Oh, why am I thinking about this in this way? And I'm able to catch them in real time And while I'm in the midst of it, I'm able to kind of calm myself or or fix it a lot quicker than I did in the past. And I think another thing that's probably a, a better thing about me now is that I'm older now, like much, much older. And because I'm older, uh the pride isn't as high as it was in the past. You know, when you're a younger guy, a man trying to be, you know, you're trying to be a man and stuff like that. Yeah, like in the past, those things I can see that, you know, that, that pride swells and, uh, you know, you, that pride keeps you from doing things that you should do, right? But I see that as I get older, the pride isn't as strong. It's just not Right, like I, I still have pride, but it's not like it's gonna, it's gonna like hold me back or hurt me even more, right? So, I was like, it was a very, very interesting thing for me, uh, for me to go through that type of thing, and I recognize and realize all the more, like, oh, this is what I have to do. This is what I need to think about, and this, these are the things that I need to fix. Like, number one is recognize them first, make a self assessment, and then the second thing you need to do is what. The second thing you need to do is to uh, work on it as it comes up. Because I, you know, you, when you really think about it, how do you fix something when it hasn't flared up? Do you know what I mean? Like you would never know in real time if you fixed it or not until it actually came up. And uh, like I, I, I haven't been working in groups. I haven't been working with people in a very, very long time. And uh, that's what it's, that's what I find uh, quite interesting. I really do. I find it quite interesting that I'm able to, uh, now that I'm starting to work with people, and these are good people that I'm working with, fun people and people that I get along with, uh, I'm able to just really assess myself and fix it on the fly. Of course, I'm, I'm not perfect with it. There's times that I'm like, ugh, I shouldn't have said that. Ugh, I shouldn't have did that kind of thing. But uh, it, was, it was something that I, I really, really uh, was very thankful and grateful about too. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's something that I'm noticing on the fly, which I think is kind of cool. Like, I have a question for you guys. This, this like, uh, one of the things I did today or yesterday was uh, I had my first kind of like talk, uh, talking to Australia. And uh, there's something that came up that I thought was uh, very, very important, like really, really important. So uh, one of the things that obviously we know from the Sunday message, there was that one incredibly moving part in the message. And we all know what part that is, right? We all know that that was the part where everyone was crying. And it was the part where um, that, uh, that the father of the, of the female pastor that was in prison writing that letter, and you get to see the letter and what the father says to his daughter, and everyone was breaking down. And I, I even asked Australians, like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you, what do you think about this, right? And, uh, you know, everyone was like, oh, it was so moving. I was like, and the, the big question I, I bring up to everyone is why is it moving to everyone? Because, you know, when you listen to other parts of the message, some parts are only moving to some people. Some parts are only moving to other people. But in this particular message, this part was moving to everyone. Everyone was moved. Why? And it's because it's your parents. Like, it's like that's so inspiring to see how that father, who's not even in Providence at that point, would support their daughter like that. And everyone can see that this daughter being in prison, it's incredible. It really is incredible. And this father supporting their daughter, we can all ex- like we can all feel it in our hearts, like, wow, that is that would give so much strength to me too. And you know, a lot of us are working on uh, evangelizing our parents and stuff like that also. And it's something that I do think we may not we may not really do as well as people of Providence is especially like I I know full timers too. One of the things that we, we really need to do well is to take care of our parents. And of course I know that um, there, there is confusion when you're younger, when you're younger, you're like passionate, you have the energy, you want to do this, you want to do that. Oh, I want to do this for history. I want to do this for history kind of thing. Right. But Sometimes we get too passionate that we begin to neglect things that we should take care of like our parents. And sometimes we look at verses like Luke chapter 12, verse 46, like uh, the cost of being a disciple, you have to hate your mother, hate your father, hate your brother, sister, your cats, your dogs, your plants, whatever it is. Like it's basically saying that um, the cost of being a disciple is to like hate everyone and only love God. And of course, the key point of that is not about hating. It's more about putting the right priorities first. And it's very rare in cases that you actually ever um, like see a split between like like the parents and the children. If anything, if you look at the way Sunseem treats his parents, if you look at the way Sunseem tells us how to treat our parents, to treat them well, do well, you know, they've done so much for us. Just the fact that they gave birth to us is enough for us to be thankful for the rest of our life. Like, these are things that Sunseem actually says to us. And sometimes when we get overzealous and we're just like, run for this history, I don't care about anything else, we neglect these really, really important things. Just as Sunseem takes care of his parents, Sunseem tells others to take care of his parents, Sunseem also, you know, Sunseem also tells us through, you know, and the Bible tells us through the Ten Commandments. The fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother. What does that mean? Well, the interesting thing about that is to honor your father and your mother. Why does, remember, one of the reasons why God speaks so highly about the father and mother, because they are parables for God and the Holy Spirit. They're the parents of our faith. They're the creators of all things. And God, in, in, for us to respect our parents is the same as us respecting the Holy Trinity. And, you know, we have to kind of understand that realizing the power and strength your parents can actually give you, they can give you a ton of strength and power, like a lot, 
We just don't know it. And sometimes um, we kind of neglect them too much or sometimes we even throw them away when we shouldn't. And that's something I, I think that we have to realize really, really deeply about ourselves is, yeah, ourselves too, we need to absolutely realize. Like we have to realize deeply in our hearts that this is the time that we have right now on this earth. But we need to eventually evangelize our parents. And even if, if things don't work out, we still have to treat them well. And I hope that, you know, we will realize uh, that our parents are that important, regardless of how much, you know, how well or how bad they treat us. You know, we have to be those that uh, can be those that testify for the word. Because I think one of the most impressive things that your parents can find out about Providence is when you treat them so well. And then when they look at you like, man, where do you learn this? And you say, I learned this from Sunsim. Sunsim is the one that told me to take care of my parents. Sunsim is the one that told me that our parents are that important. We have to take care of them, make sure they do well, right? Make sure they're healthy and all these other different things. And that's something that we really, really have to take care of with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I hope that uh, we can be those uh, that can take care of our parents well and that we will realize, yeah, this is the power that the parents give us. It's a power that sometimes we don't realize, but we will realize later when we see these stories, like what we saw in the Sunday message, and we're going to be like, wow, I wish I had that type of relationship. And I, I think a lot of times the second gens don't realize how, how amazing their relation, like how amazing it is to have their parents in Providence. Even though, like, I, for me, I'm just like, man, can you, how awesome would it be that your mom or dad wakes you up for pre-dawn and you go together? That would be awesome. And, you know, imagine your parents are like, no, 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 you can run for church and I'll, I'll support you. Like, that is awesome. Like, there's so many things that I look at, I'd be like, that is awesome kind of thing, right? And it is awesome. It is more than awesome. It is, I, I don't know how else to talk about it. And, uh, you know, the people who have their parents in Providence, they're the ones like, oh, why am my mom like this? Oh, why am my dad like this, right? And then the ones that don't have their parents in Providence, we kind of look at them like in, uh, in envy. Like, oh, I wish I had that. Praying together, listening to the word together, going to church together, going to pre on together, getting, you know, like talking about the word together and stuff like that too. I think that's incredible. I really do. And I think that's something that we can all be, uh, that we can all think about really deeply also, right? Um, oh, we had this uh, chance to go meet with Pastor Bumsuck. And, uh, oh, Pastor Bumsuck, I, I, I love him more and more. Like he is very, uh, I don't know what the right word is. He is like a man, He's like the manly man, the men of men. I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's a man kind of thing, right? And when he was speaking to us, it was very interesting because he started talking about Moses. And, you know, he's reading the Bible, like reading about Moses. And he was talking about the three stages of Moses' life. Like, tell me, guys, this does not seem like Pastor Bumsuck speaking, right? He's talking about the Bible and talking about Bible stories and realizations from them. So he's talking about, you know, Moses lived for 120 years. And uh, the first 40 years of his life, he was the prince of Egypt, right? So we know that story, prince of Egypt. Uh, he was learning from the Pharaoh how to rule uh, Egypt and such. And then when he was 40 years old, what happened was, uh, you know, he kills the Egyptian. He runs into Midian in the wilderness for another 40 years. So the first stage was prince of Egypt learning. The second stage was another 40 years in, the, in Midian. In the wilderness, he was a shepherd. And of course, he's learning patience. He's learning trust. He's learning to be humble. And if you do, even if you look at like Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, Numbers 12, 3 says that Moses was the humblest man on earth. Like that's, that's crazy, right? So here we have this like, oh, this is, this is who, um, this is who uh, Moses is. And then at, uh, then then after 40 years in the wilderness, so think about it, isn't it crazy? He's, his, his three stages of life is 40, 40, 40. 40 years prince of Egypt, 
40 years of in the wilderness being a shepherd. And then when he was 80 years old, he was called by God to, uh, to go to Pharaoh and to let Israel leave Egypt, to save his people from Egypt. And uh, what Pastor Bumsuk was saying was, he said, this third stage, when you begin your mission for God, like when you're actually doing the thing God wants you to do, he said that was the most difficult time for Moses. And when you really, really think about it, the first 40 years, he's training to be a leader, how to rule. The second 40 years, he's learning to be humble. He's a shepherd. He's being patient and learning how to trust. And then all that leads to him actually doing the mission. But that the actual doing of the mission is the hardest part. It was the hardest part of his life. His own people slandered him. His own people went against him. And he had to trust God, like no matter what. And, and, and he, he gave this one great point is, when God wanted to fulfill his will, was there anyone else who could fulfill it? And it was, no, it was only Moses. Moses. During this time, the people are slandering him. The people are saying bad things against, against him, but who, he had no one else he could trust. It was, it was just Moses. And he was, he was talking about how Moses lived such a lonely path. And when he said that, man, like you could tell that he's realizing about Sansim, like the path of Sansim, how lonely the path is how there's no one else to do the will but him. And, but that will is so difficult and hard. And I, when I was listening to it, it's like, wow. He's really seeing his brother inside this story, like as a central figure. And when I looked at that, I was like, I was, I was so moved by it. I was like, yeah, that's so true. He's like, it was such a lonely path to fulfill God's will. And it made me think about providence kind of on a larger scale when you magnify it. Providence, too, when you magnify it, we're taking the lonely path. We're taking the path where the rest of the world is against us. We're taking the path where when people find out, they don't like us. We're on that type of path. And we need to realize deeply, carefully, understand ourselves really well, understand each other really well, and we really need to take ourselves to that point when we realize, yes, this is what we need to do. This is what our expectations are. It's not an easy path. And even though we're going through this right now, you know, as Providence is going through this, you know, this uh, tribulation, if you miniaturize it, who is the one taking the loneliest path? Well, it's Sansi. That is the path of the one who fulfilled God's will. That's the path. And when I thought about that, I was like, wow. Sansi must be so lonely. And the only way that we can make him not lonely is if we run and make the will together with him. And I was like, yeah, this is what we need to do. Regardless if you're a blessed family, regardless if you're Milky Way or campus or career or full-timer or JS or whatever it is, that is the way we stop making Sun seem lonely is when we can do, when we start fulfilling the will together with him. And yeah, it, it, for me, I, I was really, uh, really in, intensely inspired when I was listening to Pastor Bumsuck too. But uh, yeah, uh, when you think about Moses, what a powerful, powerful life that he lived. He really did live that type of life. And I hope that we can also understand that this is the history of God that we're running right now. This is a path that we have to take also. Okay. So yeah, that's a, a little bit of things that I, I, I want to talk about today. And I hope that you guys enjoyed, right? And uh, are, are having a wonderful and awesome time. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you think about these things too. Okay? So, uh, yeah, before we get into the evangelism scripts, let's get into the first music break of the day. Just 
Just like the rest, I walked in death, not knowing the value of a single breath. My pride was the biggest prize I had to protect, walking around high and mighty, sticking out my chest. Calling the shots like I know what's best, living how I like, but I piled up a debt. Outside's alive and aware the inside is dead, and suddenly truth shine just like the dawn. All things in life I knew zero percent Then I realized how far I was gone Wasn't right about anything, I was dead wrong Everything thought to be reality was a fallacy My life wasn't great, it was a tragedy All I knew was fake, I thought I'm losing my sanity All the while gazing at me was the trinity Looking with love, grace and mercy Patiently working consistently with me And eventually brought me to the new history I learned about someone new whom they used He worked with heaven and I learned his stories He is living proof that the Bible's words are true On the scene at 15, splitting every single scene God's words flow from him like he's a stream Preaching to the point that even his throat would bleed The most impressive person I have ever seen Him speaking the truth revealed everything to me Parables, holy son, soul, entity, spiritual universe Frankly, I don't think he's done He saw me a thousand tons, too much for a single verse This is so amazing to the point I may burst I'm sure he's the one the Bible said would come Where else would this earth shattering word come from? Then I really realized he's the Messiah Sent to the world and raised humanity a level higher Didn't come to destroy but the word is the fire Amen to the very end my faith won't expire He's been going 79 years and hasn't tired Due to that condition the greatest blessing we've acquired Between him and eternity that time was finally captured I'm sure now that they got their bride nothing can match her Rapture, that's what we received Was evangelized, lectured, managed, now I believe Never knew this was something I could achieve Your blessings really flow endlessly I promise you, I'll never leave So I'll stay with you, to the death of me With you, I've fulfilled my destiny Now I'll reboot, give you the best of me Offering my youth, running even faster For me and so many, you're not just a pastor You're the shepherd over all these pastures King of kings, lord of lords, that's for sure we're a perfect match, a hand and a glove The atmosphere in the air is full of love Came from above to hold the banquet So I'll GGG eternally for 316 Just cause I was swept into the net of the word Heard and learned doesn't mean it's over yet I really need to look at myself and reflect Line up against God's perfect law and check All my flaws need to be resolved Be bold to slanderers when I try to call Like him, I'm thankful for tribulations Cause I didn't fall with the rapture, I'm standing tall The love they give is truly priceless If I'm not with the Lord, life enters crisis Without him, I'm a ship that's wrecked to pieces So I'll always eat the word Boxerises, stick to him, red blood cell and rhesus I praise God for sending sons to him and Jesus He had a plan for them before they were a fetus To reveal to the world heaven's deep secrets With his name bring the pain, breaking Satan's noses With the Lord's condition, let's show him a comatosis While looking at heaven, never losing focus Conversing in our thoughts every single moment then our spirits of rapture will never be stolen If you only see strife, come see what peace is If you want to know heaven, come and see this If life were an essay, this is the thesis Rapture, that's what we received Was evangelized, lectured, managed, now I believe Never knew this was something I could achieve Your blessings really flow endlessly I promise you, I'll never leave So I'll stay with you to the death of me With you I've fulfilled my destiny Now I'll reboot, give you the best of me Offering my youth, running even faster For me and so many, you're not just a pastor You're the shepherd over all these pastures King of kings, lord of lords, that's for sure We're a perfect match, a hand and a glove The atmosphere in the air is full of love Came from above to hold the banquet So I'll GGG eternally for 316 Remember this wasn't given for free So always hear the word and do good deeds Praising those that saved us is an amazing thing And live with them in love, First John 3.18 Be like him, always run on God's team If you live like him, you'll surely succeed Believe him absolutely and gotta let you pass If you want the greatest salvation, walk this only path All right, so let's get into today's uh, evangelism scripts word study And it's kind of turning into more of, uh, I would say, an evangelism talk, right? Because, you know, I did go over some scripts and I, I went over maybe like five or six different scripts. And I think the best thing to do now with those scripts that I've done every uh, on every Wednesday second segment 
is people just need to start practicing it and going out and actually using it, right? Now, uh, you know, evangelism is not an easy thing. It's something that has to be done according to your church's situation, your culture, the country that you're in, and these other different things like that too. And I would say that there are, are a few things that I would really, really be focused on when it comes to uh, evangelism. So let me give an example. Uh, remember I told you the time that uh, I was in Malaysia 10 years ago and we were, uh, there's like three of us that went out every day and just evangelized and like six people passed in like two, uh, was it in two, in, in two months kind of thing, right? Now, the one thing I found that was pretty incredible with that, and I think that's something, this is something that we really uh, made sure that we worked on is we looked for a target, now, what does that mean? It basically means that, yeah, we wanted to, uh, we had a certain target or a group of people that we really, really wanted to focus on. And even though we're in Malaysia, which is a Muslim country, uh, we focused only on Christians, not on non-Christians, not on atheist Christians. And this is why our script we used was a Bible question. And I think that's something that we do have to think about also is when you're going out to evangelize, who is your target? Like, what type of people are you going out, like, are you trying to meet? Because I believe that makes a big difference. When you actually have a target, you know, uh, it might be something that's good for your church because your church may have a lot of people like that. For instance, imagine your church was very, very, uh, like, people came from Christianity. People know the Bible really well, right? So, when you have these Christian, like if you target Christians, then you have the group of people that can take care of these people really well too. But imagine it's the opposite. You have tons of people that don't know the Bible, uh, that were never Christian in the past, but they all came from like a Gentile background. Then you may have, uh, uh, your target may be uh, Gentiles. And not just Gentiles, your evangelism script is used for Gentiles instead, Right? So, like, one of the things I do say is, like, you got to find, like, a target you really want. Don't be too open, like, you know, I just want anyone who listens. And I think that's that could be, uh, it, it could make things a little bit more difficult in the future where it's better to have a target and you'll be able to, uh, if you have that target, you know what you want. All your scripts and everything is built towards that one type of person. And it doesn't mean that 100% of the people that come are going to only be that target. There's going to be a few people here and there that are not feeling that target. But when you have a target, it means you know what you're looking for. And, you, and, and in other words, it also means you know what you're not looking for. And I think that's an important thing. Knowing what you're not looking for and knowing what you're looking for are two, uh, you know, it's the same thing, but it's something very, very important as we're going out. We have to find the ones that we want. Target the group that fits who you want. Like when I, when I heard about like even when Japan first started uh, Providence, they focused on a specific campus, which was the best campus in all of Japan. I think it was like Tok Tokyo University, right? They targeted those people, those types of students. So they're targeting students and not just students. Uh, students that went to the best university in Japan, right? And I would say, like, one of the biggest targets that I see now happening to, uh, happening right now in Providence is the target is actually becoming, like, males. It's a male target. And uh, there's, like, a specific age group. So, for instance, imagine you make a program for... Uh, imagine it's for SS... But then you're teaching people how to do resumes. That doesn't match, right? You have to match what uh, you're able to give them also. However, if you're going for business people, then you'll have like courses for business or, or other things like this where people who are learning business can actually come to. Or uh, you bring them to a place where they're going to... Uh, you bring them to... Uh, like you, If you say you're a target campus, then you might be... Uh, doing some type of an event where you're helping people to transition from campus to get their jobs, right? Or someone on something about campus where it's more of a fun event uh, that, 
that allows them to think deeply, but also have a lot of fun too, right? So th there's a, a lot of different things that we have to look at, but according to your target is going to be the difference of what you're going to say to them, uh, the events that you're going to do. And these are the things that are going to attract the people that are in your target audience also. So that's why I, I, I really think uh, getting yourself to uh, like really understanding the type of person that you want is important. And I think one of the things that Sunseem said in the past that I think is more pertinent right now is like he said like evangelize people that you'd hang out with. And that makes way more sense to me now. In the past, you're just overzealous and you evangelize anyone. But then when you realize in the future is like, if you start evangelizing people that you hang out with, that is no longer management. You're just friends, right? You're friends hanging out with other friends and it's just cool to be with each other. I think that's way different and I think that's much smarter when you think about it that way too, right? Is it's far better to just be with people that are like your friends. And I would say that what was kind of cool when I was, uh, when I first came to Providence in LA, man, we had like, uh, we were playing sports together. We're doing this and that together. It was awesome. Like the guys would just hang out. We'd, we'd want to hang out with each other. It was awesome. It really, really was. And what I, what I realized there was in the same way is like, man, these people are so fun to hang out with. It wasn't really like you're being managed. You're just having fun with a bunch of your friends. And I thought uh, like that was one of the cool ways that, you know, it makes sense when you say evangelize someone that you'd hang out with. I think that's something that would be uh, – uh, a good way a good a good way to find people also right so you know there's always been a bunch of these hints out there of how to evangelize what to do for evangelism and i really hope it's something that all of us too can kind of wrap around our heads too when we go out to evangelize there's going to be a ton of people out there in your field. People who are artists are going to meet other artists. People who are uh, athletes will meet other athletes. People who are academics will meet other academics. And it's fun and it's great. And there's going to be events where we can all hang out with each other. There's going to be events that only a certain group of people are going to hang out with too. But I, I, when, when one of the things that I do think that we have to, uh, the two things that I think that are really important, number one is your target. Number two is, evangelize people that you would want to hang out with, right? And I'm going to be honest with you guys too. A lot, there's a lot of people in Providence I just want to chill out with. I, re, I Like I enjoy my time with them. And, you know, even though I'm not trying to, it's just naturally managing them. It just becomes a natural thing. You're like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool kind of thing, right? So I hope it's something that we can all, you know, recognize and realize together and that we'll know that uh, this, is, this is what's happening. Uh, this is what we need to do to help ourselves with evangelism. And I wanted to give you just, uh, just these two tips today when it comes to going out to evangelize. And I think it's going to make it a lot easier, right? You know, one of the things that Sunsteam does talk about lately is, you know, since we don't really discern when we uh, evangelize people, what eventually happens? What eventually happens is we get people who uh, may not be, you know, they might have really bad characters or something else where they eventually hurt Providence in the end. And that's something that we truly don't want either. So we have to really choose well and choose wisely uh, when we're evangelizing people into this history. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of one of the things I want to talk about today. I hope it's something that uh, helps you guys when it comes to evangelism too, okay? So there it is. That is uh, today's evangelism. I guess we'll call it the evangelism word study. If you have any questions or any comments you want to put in, go ahead and put them in the comments below, all right? Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, that means that we're here at the end of this second segment of the day, which leaves the final music break of the day. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's get into today's final segment for the Wednesday podcast. Let's get into uh, health is happiness. And of course, we heard part one about health tips for people in their 40s, which is, you know, something very, very good for me too. Hope you guys are going to enjoy this. Please welcome all the way from Canada, this is Dr. Zini with Health is Happiness. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Zinni here, and welcome to another episode of Health is Happiness. Today we are resuming part two, health tips in your 40s. Last time, we talked about all the interesting changes that age has on our bodies. We talked about our connective tissues and skin, as well as changes in our metabolism and hormones as we age. And you did hear it right last episode. We can no longer blame our unwanted weight gain on our slowed metabolism anymore, at least not until we're 60 years of age or older. So last time we started talking about our loss of muscle mass in our 40s. Yes, we lose muscle mass as we age. So what do we do about it? So you want to be ramping up your protein intake and increasing your resistance workouts to combat this. 
Physically inactive people can lose as much as three to five percent of muscle every decade after age 30. After the age of 40, you lose muscle mass, which is the main calorie burning engine in your body, at a rate of one percent a year, approximately. It's linked to the dropping estrogen and testosterone levels that accompanies aging. Age-related muscle loss is called sarcopenia. Sarcopenia reduces your strength, mobility, and balance, and increases your risk of falls and low trauma fractures. One contributor to sarcopenia is the natural decline of testosterone, the hormone that stimulates protein synthesis and muscle growth. Some research has shown that supplemental testosterone can add lean body mass, that is muscle, in older men, but there can be adverse effects. Plus, the FDA has not approved of these supplements specifically for increasing muscle mass in men. Therefore, the best means to build muscle mass, no matter what your age is, is progressive resistance training. This means you gradually amp up your workout volume, whether it's increasing weight, increasing reps or sets, as your strength and endurance improve. Your diet also plays a role in building muscle mass. Protein is the king of muscle food. The body breaks it down into amino acids, which it uses to build muscle. However, older men often experience a phenomenon called anabolic resistance, which lowers their body's ability to break down and synthesize protein. Therefore, with resistance training, as you get older, you need more of it. A recent study in the journal Nutrients suggests a daily intake of 1 to 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight for older adults who do resistance training. For example, a 175-pound man would need about 75 to 100 grams of protein a day. And then you'd want to divide that protein equally among your meals to maximize muscle protein synthesis. As I mentioned earlier, your body can't absorb more than a certain amount of protein anyway. Animal sources such as meat, eggs, and milk are considered the best as they provide the proper ratios of all the essential amino acids. Yet you want to stay away from red and processed meat because of the high levels of saturated fat and additives. Instead, opt for healthier choices such as 3.5 ounces of lean chicken or salmon, which gives about 30 grams of protein, 6 ounces of plain Greek yogurt, which is about 17 grams, 1 cup of skim milk, which is about 9 grams, or 1 cup of cooked beans, about 18 grams. Protein powders can also offer about 30 grams per scoop and can be added to all kinds of meals, like oatmeal, shakes, and yogurt. While food sources are the best supplemental protein, protein powders can help if you struggle with consuming enough protein from your regular diet. Also, to maximize muscle growth and improve recovery, you should consume a drink or meal with a carbohydrate to protein ratio of about 3 to 1 within 30 minutes of your workout. For example, a good choice is 8 ounces of chocolate milk, which is about 22 grams of carbs and 8 grams of protein. On top of developing muscle strength, you also want to improve your muscle power, or how fast and efficiently you move. This is more connected to your activities of daily living and physical function than muscle strength. For instance, when rising from a seated position, try to do it more quickly. When climbing stairs, hold the handrail and push off each step as fast as possible. This teaches your muscles to use strength in a more effective way. A typical progressive resistance training program might include 8 to 10 exercises that target all the major muscle groups. Sets of 12 to 15 reps performed at an effort of about 5 to 7 on a 10-point scale. You do these 2 to 3 workouts per week. After you've established a routine, you can progress by decreasing the number of reps per set and increasing the weight or resistance. A good guideline is if you're able to complete at least 8 reps but no more than 12. As you improve, you can increase your weight by trial and error, but you can stay within the range of 8 to 12 reps. One of the challenges of aging is that in your 40s, life itself makes you less active. Between your career, your spiritual life, your family, your friends, exercise can fall further down on the priority list in your 40s. Creaky, achy joints can also make us become less active with time. 
Overuse and joint injuries resulting from all the years of exercise may cause you to give up your favorite activity or force you to slow down. And this can contribute to you feeling out of shape. But just keep moving. You don't have to do high intensity exercises or be extreme in your workouts. Start first by finding something active that you love so that you're more likely to enjoy and stick with it. Consistency is key. After a while, consistency is key. After a while, you can add on challenges and build in resistance. As you're older and you have more responsibilities, you could also feel more stressed. And when you're stressed, your body secretes cortisol. We talked about the harm in chronic cortisol secretion. Constant cortisol secretion can affect your blood sugar levels, make you want to eat more, and choose sugary foods. You then develop fat around the belly due to the excess sugar intake. And a larger waistline is linked to conditions like fatty liver disease, diabetes, and heart disease. So because of the added stress and responsibilities as you get older, I urge you to develop coping strategies and pay attention to how you manage your stress and your mental health early on. According to the Center of Disease Control, depression is more prevalent among women and people aged 40 to 59. So it's important to keep your spiritual connection with the Holy Trinity through prayer and listening to the Word because it gives us so much wisdom and direction as to how to live our lives and how to deal with certain situations. Also take responsibility and practice your relaxation techniques. Practice your breathing exercises, meditation, visualization, yoga, deep muscle relaxation, and learn how to recognize and throw out unhealthy and illogical thought patterns using CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. I went over CBT and breathing exercises in detail in my earlier episodes of Health is Happiness. Also, ensure you stay connected with people who are supportive of you. Cancers. Other than genetics and environment, one important risk factor for cancer is your age. As you get older, your chance for a cancer diagnosis increases. According to the National Cancer Institute, the median age of a cancer diagnosis is 66. But about 5.2% of all new cancers are diagnosed in patients who are quite young, 35 to 44 years of age. Another 14.1% of new cases are diagnosed when people are 55 to 64 years of age. Even though cancer can occur in any person at any age, it's important to be cautious about it once you hit your 40s. It's important to be cautious about it once you hit 40. In your 40s, depending on where you live, make it a priority to stay on top of all regular cancer screening programs that are offered in your age group. These are things like mammograms, colonoscopies, prostate cancer screening. See your family doctor for these important preventive health strategies. The sooner the diagnosis and treatment for cancer, the more likely you're going to get better. So we are out of time today, and that wraps up my health tips for your 40s. So I hope from what we've discussed through Health is Happiness, we can all build healthy habits early on that will prevent so many diseases from happening in the future. Okay, take care, and join us again next Wednesday for another episode of Health is Happiness. And thank you so much, Dr. Zinni, for another wonderful episode of Health is Happiness. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Yes, health tips for people in their 40s. Uh, this is part two. So if you want to listen uh, to part one, last Wednesday's uh, final segment has part one for that. Okay. So I hope you guys really enjoyed today's uh, podcast. I hope you guys have an amazing and awesome day. If you have any questions or anything, leave in the comments below. Uh, if not, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw run up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone.